Today in the studio, I'll show you how to define a macro in Ruby. Hey folks, Mike Clark here with the Pragmatic Studio. Today we're gonna to tap into the power of Ruby objects and methods to write a class level declaration, sometimes called a macro. Here's an example of what I'm talking about from Rails. If you've ever used Rails, this should look fairly familiar. We've got a movie class that has many reviews and a project class that has many tasks. Now, the first time you encounter a declaration like has many, it looks like something built into the Ruby language or some magical aspect of Rails. But in fact, it's simply Ruby code. Ruby itself makes programming in this declarative style easier than you might think. And once you understand how it works, you'll be more confident with Rails and be able to use this same powerful technique in your own Ruby code. So let's create a simplified version of this declaration from scratch, building up from the underlying principles that make it work. So let's get ourselves a clean slate here. And I wanna create a simple string object. We'll call it dog1, and the name of this dog is Roscoe. Now this is a string object, so we can call any of the methods in the string class. For example, if I wanted to print out Roscoe uppercase, I would use the upcase method, which is defined in the string class. And no surprise, it prints out Roscoe's name, upcased. So we can call any method inside of the string class, but Ruby also lets us define methods on this specific object. The way we do that is we use def, and then we give it the object name, dog1 in this case, and then the name of the method we want to define. I'm going to define a method called hunt. And inside of that method, I'll just print out woof. Then to call that method, I'll just call dog1.hunt, and Roscoe goes woof. Okay, now here's a different string object. Let's say we have dog2 and it's Snoopy. And if we say dog2.hunt and we try to run that, well, this dog don't hunt. If we look at the error message that we get up here, it says undefined method hunt for Snoopy, which is a string. We can call any of the string level methods on the dog2 object, but we can't call the hunt method because we only define the hunt method on the dog1 object. You'll often hear this referred to as a singleton method. Think of it as a method defined on a single object. Now that's kind of interesting, but when would you ever want to do this? Well, it turns out that you use singleton methods all the time in Ruby, and we need one to define our declaration. So let's go ahead and get a clean slate again, and we'll define our movie class. Now in Ruby, classes are objects too. In fact, we could print out the class of the movie class here, and if we run that, it says the class of the movie class is class. And that in itself is an object. We can see that by printing out the object ID of that class object. And interestingly to note, the movie here is just a constant that references that class object. So classes in Ruby are objects too, and any given Ruby class is an object of class class. And if a Ruby class is an object in its own right, well, then we can treat it like any other object. For example, let's take our movie class here, and we're going to assign it to a variable. I'm just going to call it my class. Remember that constant movie references the class object. I've just assigned it to a variable there. Then we want to define a method just for that object. We know how to do that. We say my class, the method we want, I'm going to call it my class method. This is going to singleton method here. And then inside of there, I'm just going to put running class method. And then to actually call that method, we use the object my class, that's the class object, and then we call the my class method. So if we run that, well, it runs the method. We see running the class method. So that's basically the same thing we did with the dog object. We just happened to define the singleton method on the class object, which is the movie. I'll go ahead and remove this temporary variable. We really don't need it. And here I'll just say movie. And then down here I can change my class to movie because we know they're the same thing. And that works just as well. In fact, to make this a little bit more traditional, we can move this method inside of our movie class up here. And that also works. So here's the takeaway. In Ruby, there is no such thing as a class method. My class method here is just a singleton method defined on the movie class object. So that's the first principle, but it doesn't quite look like the declaration we want yet. The second principle we need to look at is that class definitions are executable code. And we can prove that just by putting some print statements. Up here, I'm gonna print before class definition. Take that line and inside of the class definition, I'm going to print inside class definition. And then down here, I'll print 
after class definition. Now if we run it, let's see what happens. Well, we get before class definition. Ruby starts at the beginning of the file, starts interpreting this file, so we see before class definition. Then it starts defining the movie class. Inside of there, we see inside class definition. Then we get to after class definition. It's completed the definition. Then we turn around and call my class method, which is up here, and we see running class method as the last printout there. So code is being executed during the process of defining this class. And if that's the case, then we can actually run this my class method inside of the class definition. We'll just take this line out, put it down here, and this is going to switch the order a little bit. So if we run it now, what we see is we get before class definition at the top, inside class definition, then as the class is being defined right here, it calls my class method. So we see running class method, and then it finishes the class definition. So again, as the class is being defined, all this code is running, and we prove that by actually executing this method. But using this movie constant right here and right here seems a little bit repetitive. Well, it turns out that during the class definition, Ruby is keeping track of which class object is being defined inside of the variable called self. And we can print that out. I'm going to do it right up here inside class definition of self. That's the name of the variable. If we run that, it says inside class definition of movie. So self is set to the current class object being defined, which is the movie in that case. That being the case, we can substitute for here movie self. We know that's going to be the same thing. And when we call the method here, we can use self as well. And that works just the same. Now this is starting to look like this class declaration that we want, except for this self dot thing right here. Self is the receiver of this method call right here. But if we leave off self and we don't explicitly call it on the self object, then implicitly Ruby will use self as the receiver of that method call. So if we remove self, this still works. So this is looking closer to the style of declaration we want. Let's go ahead and clean up a few things here. I'm going to remove these spurious put s statements. We don't need those anymore. And then we're going to rename this method just so it looks a little bit more familiar. Instead of my class method, let's call it has many. And we're actually going to pass in a parameter here, the name of the association we want. We're going to say has many reviews. So then up here, we can change the definition of this method. It's going to be called has many. I'm just going to take a parameter, that's the name of the association, and we're just going to call that parameter name. And then inside of here, for our put s statement, we'll say self has many name. Okay, so this is just the argument reviews, which will get passed in as name, and then we print that out here. There's nothing special about this has many and the name of this method. This is just a string that we're going to print out. So if we run that, well, it says movie has many reviews. So as the class was being defined, it started up at the top, started working through here. When it got to the line has many reviews, it called this method, passing in reviews for the name, and then we printed that out. And notice that the value of self when this method is run is the movie class object. Okay, so the has many method is being called during the class definition, but what should this method do? Well, in Rails, has many dynamically defines a handful of methods for managing the association. For example, in this case, it would generate a reviews method that returns the reviews associated with the movie. And we'd call it like this. We'd have a movie object. We'd get this movie object from the database. I'm just going to create a new one here because we're not connected to a database. And we could turn around and call movie.reviews. And that would return an array that contained the reviews associated with that movie. Now, it defines a bunch of other methods as well, but we're just going to concentrate on this one because the technique is the same. If we try to run that, well, we get an undefined method reviews for the movie because there is no reviews instance method on our movie object. But we can define that method. We'll just go back up into has many. And let's look at the method we want to define. It would look something like this, reviews. And inside of there, well, Rails would connect to the database and go fetch all those reviews. I'm just going to stub that out with some simple debugging statements. You know, it would say something like select star from the reviews table where the reviews are associated with that movie. And then I'm also going to print out returning the reviews, and it would return an array. I'm just going to stub it out as an empty array right there. But hard coding the method like this isn't going to work. Well, it would only work for reviews. For example, if we had something like has many genres on a movie, which is something that is reasonable to do, well, we wouldn't have a genres method. 
So instead of defining methods traditionally, like we have with the reviews method here, we need to dynamically define a method for each association. For example, if we have has many reviews, we need to dynamically generate a reviews method that returns those reviews. If we have has many genres, we'd have to define a genres method that returns the genres for that movie. And we don't know the names of those methods until runtime, until this class is being defined. So we need to define those methods dynamically on the fly. And we can do that using define method. I'm gonna get rid of this line for just a minute. Come back up here, instead of defining the method this way, we're gonna use the define method call. The define method takes the name of the method we wanna generate. Now, if we just wanted reviews, it would look something like this. We give it a block and the body of the block becomes the body of the method. But this would just dynamically define a method called reviews. Instead, we wanna define a method that corresponds to the name of this association. And we have this in this variable name up here. So we just pass that in as the argument. And then it'd be select star from, I'll go ahead and interpolate that name because it's gonna depend on the association. And this would be returning whatever those names are. And this is gonna define an instance method on the movie class. Whenever you call define method, it always defines an instance method in the receiver. And the receiver of this call right here is the movie object. So we're gonna end up with an instance method in the movie class. So we save that away and run it. Well, we see that when this line ran, it defined that method. And then down here, when we turned around and called reviews, it ran the method. So we see select star from movies, which is up here, and then returning those reviews. So the method got defined here as the class was being defined, but then it got run down here when we asked the movie for its reviews. In fact, we can call this again sometime later in our program, we wanted to get the reviews and we see it just got defined, movie has many reviews once, but then each time we call it, it selects those from the database and returns them. And because we're defining this method dynamically, we can now come back up here and say has many genres, for example. And then down here, we would say movie.genres, we would expect to have that method that returns the genres for those, that movie. And sure enough, at the top, if we look, it says has many reviews, has many genres. So it defined those methods as the class was being defined. But then later on, we turn around and call the methods and you notice it's selecting star from the genres table. So now our has many method is dynamically defining methods based on the name of the association we give it right here. So this is pretty cool, but it only works for this movie class right now. We'd like to take all this behavior and share it across multiple classes. And the way we'll do that is just use inheritance. So I'm gonna cut this out of this movie class. I'm gonna define a new class up here called base. And I'm just gonna paste that method in like that. And then down in our movie class, we can inherit from the base class. And if we do that, well, it's gonna inherit that has many class method and things work just like they did before. And just to make it a little bit more familiar, we'll take that base class and we'll put it inside of a module called active record. This will be nested inside of the module, defined inside of the module, like that. And then here, we'll inherit from active record, colon, colon, active record is the module. There's a base class inside of that. So we use active record, colon, colon, base. And that works as well. So now that we're using inheritance, we can actually define a new model here. Let's say we have a model called project. It can inherit from active record base. And it has many tasks, for example. Then down here, we'll create a new project. And we can turn around and call project.tasks to fetch those from the database. If we run this, we see select star from tasks returning those tasks. So we dynamically defined a tasks method here that returned all those tasks using our has many declaration. So now we've come full circle and we've implemented the two models that we had when we started and we defined a has many declaration on those. Now obviously Rails does a whole bunch more stuff under the covers with these declarations, but I think you get the point of how to define a class level declaration, sometimes called a macro, and how those work. Well, that wraps up today's session. I hope that helps demystify things a bit. Just remember, there's nothing special or magical about these class level declarations. They're just regular Ruby methods that generate some code. Give them a try on your own and leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.